Today we're going to visit the studio of Wadena's hometown artist, Kent Shear. Come along with me and let's see what he's up to. Hi, Kent. You've been known in years past as the Wadena toy maker originally. That's true. And I was just wondering, you know, can you tell us a little bit about how you got started in your art career? It actually started in the Park Rapids area, in fact, up towards Itasca Park. In about 1972, I built a small cabin. I was surrounded by trees. There was my raw material. Wood. So I began being a wood carver and okay. just decided they had to do it and taught myself. And so th these are some of your early, early endeavors, right? These you, are some you did wood carving like? Fairly early pieces right here and as a matter of fact, uh, in Minnesota we're really lucky because we have some of the best carving wood possible. in Kent's toy shop and some of the samples of your toy making career. Can you just tell us a little bit about a few of these, Kent? Well, we certainly have a range of things that I was really interested in and um, certainly all toys, for example. Let's uh, take this, maybe to start with, this goes back to a very simple type of a toy, back once again to England, maybe Germany, Europe. You get some action and you get it from a very simple just twist of the wrist. So that was, I enjoyed kind of working with that whole idea. Here's a more updated character. Colorful. We so just get some action by simply twisting. Um, then pull toys were very popular hundreds of years ago. These are tiny versions just for display, just for collectible use. A pull toy would be much larger like this. But you know, you see the idea. You can just be pulled along. Um, so I did a number of pull toys. This little fellow hasn't got his string. Um, I got interested in dolls, and I'm think, talking about very simple dolls. So I wanted to do a punch, and um, uh, we're talking about all wooden dolls, are very simple, but rely heavily on the wood carving. So here's a kind of a classic punch from Punch and Judy, the old puppet show in England. And even more, is this peg doll, which goes back to the cheapest dolls that kids could possibly have. The very poor children could afford these at just a penny a piece or so. And maybe finally, a simple noise maker, just based on a Japanese folk toy. Sort of basis. I think this fish wants to get away from him. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> you have a predator and prey. <laughs> So I understand after so many years of making toys, then you moved on to a different a line new, of work. A new piece, a new item. That's right, something totally different. I can show you that. I'd like that. Can we All right. see some? Let's take a look. All right. So from toys, we go to spoons, and if you look down here, you'll see that Kent has quite a collection. Can you tell us about some of these spoons, Kent? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is that they're based on an, an old Norwegian folk example, and this is the uh, first one that I found. found it in an antique shop, and it uh, stimulated the idea to try wooden spoons. So these are all taken from this same simple design, which had an interesting grip much like this. Oh. So these are different kinds of wood. The wood shows up really nicely in this simple shape. Now for example, this is our native Minnesota birch. This is ebony. This is ash. Here's sumac. And maybe most surprising of all, this gorgeous one is buckthorn. Beautiful. That's a name that's going to ring with a lot of people, for example. So now this was to show the color on a simple shape and then we go to an idea of using a more complex shape and letting its outline be decorative. And now I wanted to experiment with a plain wood that had no character to it and go with just dealing with these profiles and outlines to give it some shape. 
So here is a different a variety of different approaches to doing that. And right here, for example, something out in left field, you always want to experiment around a little bit. And uh, in a different vein, this is a little mixing whip or a stirring whip for stirring powders and liquid like chocolate milk from a mix. And um, this was just a pure experiment. Not even quite sure what it would be used for. So it didn't go anywhere. I just held on to it for myself. Boiled potatoes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so spoons were a lot of fun. I spent about five years doing spoons. And um, I was sending them all across the United States too. So once again, you're inspired by traditional forms, but you add your own creative flair. And you've gone back to using your finely developed woodworking skills. Now let's look at some of the really creative things that you're doing recently. You're kind of moving away from working with wood, isn't that correct? In a whole new vein, and I have some examples over here. Great, let's go see them. All right. Oh, um, I got interested in metals and uh, specifically in using some of the scrap metals that could be found uh, locally and inexpensively. And I started with aluminum. This is actually an old sign. This is a horse, pull toy. We talked about pull toys. And lately now I'm really putting my emphasis on plant forms and animal forms for garden sculpture. And what I would really like to do is consider these to be small versions, the test versions, and then see some of these things scaled up to maybe be six or eight feet tall. Right? What triggers your imagination to go to this next level? It was really finding the availability of these really interesting um, surplus materials. Copper, brass, aluminum, bronze that were available at a local scrapyard. And um, you walk in and see the shine and what potential they have. I just decided they needed to be used. Well, these are the scrap bins at Wadena Hide and Fur, and this is a place I come to check for possible materials. Uh, there's nothing really exciting in right now, but look at some of the possibilities that could exist with just a piece like this, this incredible texture and that wonderful shine. I think it's stainless steel. And then here's a bin of aluminum shapes, uh, all chopped up aluminum. If you move around, there'll be copper, there'll be copper wire, there's going to be more stainless, there's crushed radiators. And it's difficult to know for sure what you're going to see. You can get pieces from uh, nickel. You can get beautiful bright copper pieces that are chopped off from fresh material. So it's always fun to come look through and see what might be a possible item.
We'll let Kent continue working on his designs, but we'll come back in a few months to visit his sculpture park and see his finished works. To learn more about Kent Shear, visit our website at lakescountry.tv.